Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of the course Fundamentals and Applications of Dielectric Ceramics. So, let us just briefly recap what we were doing in the last class. So, in the last lecture, we were talking about, we finished our discussion on phase diagrams of uh, PZT for example, which shows, which is a solid solution of uh, of P B Z R O 3 and P B T I O 3, both are perovskite structured compounds and they make extended solid solution. And the important thing about this phase diagram is that it contains a morphotropic phase boundary at 4753 or nearly 5050 composition at which both rhombohedral and tetragonal phases coexist as a result, as a result of coexistence of two, two phases the dielectric constant is very high as well as the polarization is very high and this is the so, near 50 50 compositions are most useful composition of PZT and this is by far the most successful piezoelectric for various applications. And then we were looking at the details of ferroelectric measurements. How do we make ferroelectric measurements? We saw that the ferroelectric measurements are made using something called a saver, say a Trover circuit and the important thing is to make these measurements in such a manner so that you you don't consider artifacts as uh, as a real ferroelectric so a good ferroelectric loop would be something like this or something like like this but if you have a ferroelectric loop like this for example so this is these are good ones okay these are good ones but if you have something like this let us say then this is a bad ferroelectric loop. If you have something like this, this is a bad ferroelectric loop. So, when you get these bad ferroelectric loops, then you must make measurements at different temperatures to see what is the intrinsic contribution. Because if you have a rounded loop, rounded loop generally, so rounding, so basically you can say the rounded loops without saturation. have higher electrical leakage which means sample is of poor quality it contains defects it contains entities which give rise to high leakage as a result uh, often one needs to low temperature measurements to distinguish between the ferroelectric contribution and the leakage contributions even at low temperatures there is a possibility that you may not get uh, saturated loops so, you must be aware of what is good and what is bad and uh, do not report the bad loops as, uh, as a ferroelectric loop. So, now let us let us go to the uh, details of this lecture. So, uh, here uh, so we would like to, so we have seen ferroelectric measurements. Now, next we move on to how do we make piezoelectric measurements. Now, piezoelectric measurements are basically based on measurement of measurement of direct or indirect piezoelectric coefficient, right. So, direct, so you can see that uh, direct piezoelectric coefficient is and the most common of them is to d33 measure d33 okay so d33 is nothing but you can say so direct piezoelectric coefficient is when you apply stress you measure the uh, the polarization so basically you are measuring coulomb versus per, per newton of force that is what is direct piezoelectric coefficient so basically the polarization is the response and force is the mm, this is the applied force. So, this is what is direct piezoelectric coefficient and indirect piezoelectric coefficient would be so 
So, let us say indirect would be d 3 3 prime let us say it would be the uh, you are, when you apply electric field you are measuring the strain. So, that is basically you can say uh, you can say strain divided by volt per meter. So, basically what you are measuring is meter per volt. Okay. So, how much is the change in length that you observe or change in height that you observe upon application of a certain uh, voltage. So, this is what is the indirect coefficient and there are various methods uh, which uh, achieve this. So, in piezoelectric case there are direct techniques direct techniques such as uh, direct techniques also you can have two, two of them. So, you can have piezoelectric effect and you can have indirect piezoelectric effect. Okay. So, among these also we have lot of techniques, we have just the technique based on uh, the application of normal load. So, basically what, what, what you do is that you have a sample which is, so this is your sample, sample is sandwiched between two electrodes uh, and then you apply a mechanical load and then you measure the basically uh, for a force if you apply a force F, apply a force F and uh, you basically measure the electrical charge. Charge or dielectric displacement as we say right. Okay, so, basically D 3 3 effective in this case would be uh, del of let us say D, let us say in this case D 3 to del of sigma 3 okay, or F 3 you can say. The, so, this is what you are going to measure and this is nothing but Q divided by F. Okay. So, this is what we measure in this case. This is a very simple method, but the problem here is the tips when you apply force using a tip, the tip has to be in contact and also how the electric. So, generally what happens is that in these samples the tip is a, so this is for example, we do it in piezo force microscopy. Generally the pit tip is not flat and tip tends to be, so if you have a sample the tip tends to be like this. So, we, so there is a problem in calculating the effective area which is of contact and secondly the electric field distribution within the sample. Um, that is uh, rather uncertain. So, this is, but this is a uh, easy technique to measure the piezoelectric effect and the second method that is used is what we call as periodic compressional force use of. So, this is first and the second one would be use of peri use of periodic compression force. In this case what happens is that there is a piezoelectric transducer. So, this is a piezoelectric transducer which is in contact with the metallic rod. So, this is a metal rod and this rod is then in contact with. So, uh, on the bottom we have a we have a silicon we have a substrate let us say a silicon on the silicon we have metal and then we have a piezoelectric. So, this is piezo and then in between we have what we called as a coupling liquid. So, using the piezoelectric the vibrations are transferred using from the top metal to the piezoelectric and that is how you measure the, uh, the charge. Now, this uses a coupling liquid to ensure that the, the charges which are generated are over the uniform area and the force distribution is small and then you also compare this with the reference. So, you use a reference sample to make measurement so that you compare the charge generated in the normal sample with respect to the reference sample. So, this is a good method, but it is not very easy to make because you can see that use of liquid and stuff like that which makes it complicated. And the 
So, this is second method and the third method among this is, is, is called as cantilever method. This is the most common method. So, in the cantilever method you have a cantilever which is pushed against a pointed, let us say there is a, there is, there is a cantilever which is moved up or down and this cantilever pushes the, so this is this is sort of a strained beam kind of you can say this is kind of a cantilever, this is let us say the, the cantilever and this is the beam on which your sample is coated let us say okay. and uh, then this is connected to your uh, what, what you can say and there is a load somewhere here and then this is connected to a oscilloscope. Okay, and you measure the basically displacement of the by using by moving this cantilever up and down. You measure the display, displacement. So this is a very easy method, but the uh, but again the problem is the strain produced may not be uniform, and 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 uh, there, there is a there could be a problem with different kinds of samples. So uh, you you have to use uh, a silicon cantilever on which you have to coat the film. So when you coat the film, film is of certain quality. But when you make a real sample, the real sample quality may be different as compared to what is coated on the beam. So those are the issues that may be there. There are other methods which are also there is a pneumatic pressure rig, rig measurement, and there is also what we call as uh, optical in interferometry. So, optical intro interferometry is a popular method nowadays uh, for measuring the piezoelectric coefficient. Uh, what happens in this case is in optical interfer in, in case of optical interferometry is you have a laser and this laser goes through the lenses okay, and then it goes through a beam splitter. Let us say this is a beam splitter and then this laser falls on a sample okay and uh, and then using the beam beam splitter the laser also goes through the lens to a photodiode so here we have a photodiode okay this is lens this is also lens and then, then this photodiode is connected to what we call as a to to a feedback system Okay, and then this is uh, this laser through a beam splitter is connected to a reference mirror. So we have a mirror, and then here we have a transducer. And uh, when the laser falls on the sample under a load, it generates a signal. This signal goes to uh, lock-in amplifier. So we have a lock-in here and this lock in is connected to some recording device okay and then this photodiode takes signal from lock in and then this goes to the monitor okay or oscilloscope or whatever it can be so basically you are measuring the oscillations on the surface of the sample using a laser beam here and you are comparing that with a reference sample and that is how you make the measurement of uh, this is a technique which is used in nowadays in uh, a few commercial samples especially for thin film measurement because direct measurements are not easy to make on uh, thin film samples they are more suitable for bulk sample or thick samples whereas uh, for thin films very thin film the optical interferometry method is more popular. So these are certain methods for making the measurements of uh, direct type and so and then we can have measurements related to uh, surface surface acoustic waves waves or bulk acoustic waves uh, these are typically uh, the indirect methods okay so they are basically coupling of acoustic waves with, with respect to sample which are used to measure the piezo response so in case of single beam in, in case of uh, 
optical interferometry the resolution can be quite high. So, we can measure up to about 0.1 pico coulomb per Newton. So, this is a fairly high resolution and the displacement that can be measured of the order of 10 to the minus 3 nanometer range of displacement. So, very very accurate method if you on the other hand if you look for cantilever method cantilever method can measure up to about 0 0.6 uh, coulombs per meter square resolution. It has pretty high sensitivity 0 0.6 coulombs per meter square is pretty high sensitivity. Uh, you can convert this into micro coulombs per centimeter square and uh, that, that tells you that uh, the, this is quite quite sensitive method and uh, it is also direct. So, it is very use, useful method and then if you look at the application normal load this has a lower accuracy this has an accuracy of about 20 pico coulomb per Newton okay, uh, plus minus 20 pico coulomb per Newton. And the periodic force, the periodic compression is about 0 0.03 pico coulomb per Newton accuracy. Uh, pretty accurate, but a little difficult measurement to make because of use of liquid and things like that. So, so among direct methods, the popular methods of are application normal load and cantilever method and the optical interferometry method. Whereas, among the indirect methods, surface acoustic waves or bulk acoustic wave type of methods are uh, more important basically based on resonance and uh, so on and so forth. Now, let us look at the piezoelectric measurements. Sorry, not piezoelectric, pyroelectric measurements. So, in case of pyroelectric measurements, what we are measuring here is basically there are again two methods. One is the first method is called as static method. In the static method, what you are doing is that you are measuring the hysteresis loop as a function of temperature. So, let us say you measure hysteresis loop at one temperature, then you measure hysteresis loop at another temperature and so on and so forth. So, basically you make temperature dependent PE measurements and then the, from this you can plot what is the this can lead to what is the plot of polarization as a function of temperature. So, you will have a plot something like this okay, uh, for a second order phase transition and then for a uh, the change in polarization let us say if you zoom this section then you can. So, this is P versus T from this we can determine what is small p s which is small p i which is del p s by del t. The slope can give you from the linear region the, the change in the, uh, the, the pyroelectric coefficient. But the problem is that it is uh, in this case the mat you, it is it is it is not suitable for materials with higher coercive field. So, which is which could be higher than their breakdown field. So, if the if the coercive field is very high. Uh, especially if it is more than the breakdown field and it is not uh, then it leads to conduct conducting samples and it is not a very useful measurements. Another measurements this is this is called as dynamic method. This dynamic method is basically measurement of uh, you can say the pyroelectric current. So, when you have this spontaneous varying spontaneous polarization as a function of temperature, this varying spontaneous polarization causes a change in the current which is in the pyroelectric current and you measure this current basically. So, what you have here is this, this current is basically you can say into. So, if you look at this, this is uh, polarization which is micro coulomb percent, this is sorry, um, this is the pyroelectric coefficient this is temperature 
and you have to multiply by the time. So, Q is equal to it, right? So, i is equal to Q divided by t and from this you can measure what is the pyroelectric coefficient which is i divided by a the area of the sample into the change in temperature as a function of time. So, you are measuring current as a function of change in temperature with respect to time and basically this is a very simple circuit. What you have here is you have a you have a sample here which is let us say the sample, sample will have certain resistance and as a result you have certain current passing through the sample. This is basically it is kept in an oven which is or, or, or a furnace with, uh, with a controlled scan rate and then you have a basically you can say on this side you have a voltmeter and uh, you measure the current which is flowing in this direction. So, taking through a voltmeter you measure the current right and so, so if you have a circuit like this and let us say the resistance of the circuit sample is let us say R C uh, and then resistance of the measuring circuit is R M then we can say uh, I M will be equal to I into R C divided by R C plus R M where R C is the sample leakage resistance basically okay. and R M is the you can say device resistance right. Okay. So, you can see that I M into R C plus R M is equal to I into R C that is what you are interested in measuring. So, this is a simple measurement for measure. So, measurement of pyroelectric current is the simple way of measuring the pyroelectric uh, coefficients. And then of course, there are other methods such as laser intensity modulation methods and so on and so forth, which you can get into details. Um, now, what we, we would like to do that is uh, we have discussed the ferroelectric, uh, the, the physics of ferroelectric materials, the pyroelectric materials, the piezoelectric materials the mathematical expressions, the phase transitions, the kind of crystal structures they have. So, about the uh, now let us look at certain uh, applications of these materials. So, you can say first we will look at the application of piezo electric material. So, let us see uh, some of the piezoelectric materials the applications. So, the first application let us consider that is of uh, a gas lighter which is a very simple application uh, just to light the gas by generating a, pyre, a current in the uh, in the circuit. So, let us say so, what does what does this require for this L I G H T E R? So, what does this require? You need a you need two piezoelectric pieces. Okay. So, let us say A and B, these are two piezoelectric samples. We take it in such a manner so that their polarizations are reversed. So, let us say one is this polarization, another is this polarization. So, two pieces with opposite p direction. Okay. So, when you take these two samples, let us say in this sample you have up and another sample you have down, and then when you apply the stress. So, then you apply the stress to them. So, let us say you apply stress to this stress is let us say in this fashion. So, then you say you apply stress to both pieces. So, when you apply stress to both pieces, So, you will develop the polarization right. So, let us say one of the samples has charges like these and another sample will have charges like right. When you apply stresses 
uh, the polarization will increase. So, you can say polarization will will increase and what will polarization increase mean? Polarization increase will mean that you have increase in the surface charge density. So, your surface charge density increases and then what you do is that you bring them together. So, now you can say sorry. bring them together. How do you bring them together? You bring them together because the same charges will come together. So, basically when you same when you bring the same charges together like this, then these charges let us say here, this will generate a spark when the when they are pressed together they will generate a charge and this will basically lead to so you will have a you will have a circuit connected and this and let us say this is the circuit which is the uh, positive charge from here you will flow the negative charge so this is the negative charge and hence this will generate the spark so this will across the gap when the charge is combined together it will generate the so this is where we will have spark generation when you bring them together. So, basically you take two pieces of opposite polarization, apply stress, create more polarization, bring the same charge faces, same sign of uh, bring the opposite faces together. So, that the positive positive faces are in front of each other or negative negative faces are in, in front of each other. So, positive charges will flow to one direction, negative charges are taken through the outer circuit and then the positive and negative meet with each other, they will create a what we call as a spark. Okay. So, this is what the this is what this uh, gas lighter is going to work like. Now, there are other applications as well piezoelectric is a very useful material it is used for other applications such as uh, you know if you if you know that ultrasound measurements right ultrasound testing it works as a transducer it works as a actuator and so ultrasound testing is basically on the on the on the, on the principle of generation of detection of ultrasound waves which are generated using a piezoelectric so uh, they are very useful for medical applications transducers are the ones where you create a transduction transduction means create a linear motion so wherever you want to create a linear motion you can create a, use a piezoelectric actuation means you provide actuation and then you can um, again so it is a motion related device you can create an actuating device. So, we will look at some of those applications in the next class. Okay. So, what we have discussed in this class is basically the principles of measurements of piezoelectric and pyroelectric measurements in very brief manner and uh, now we are going to uh, and, and then we looked at the applications of uh, piezoelectrics we will continue on the application of piezoelectrics and pyroelectrics as well as ferroelectrics in the next lecture. Thank you.